Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So over the past year, I have had the privilege of testing out the Monowalker Fatmate hiking trailer on a variety of different types of terrain. And I had all this footage just sitting around collecting dust, so I thought I would put it all together for a nice little video for you. Probably gonna be a long one, so sit back and enjoy. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I'm just gonna go for a stroll with the loadout. Got about a 90 pound payload, all things included. It includes the backpack, the camera equipment, everything that you see here, including the monowalker of course, which is about 20 pounds. And it uh, doesn't feel like a whole hell of a lot. There's not many people who can shoot a video carrying 90 pounds of gear and do it in such a way where they're not straining themselves and they're not out of breath. The great thing about the fat weight is there's lots of shock absorption on that big tire. There is no shocks, unfortunately. However, we do have a nice disc brake, as you can see here. So I would just put that disc brake up and even if I needed a chance to just, you know, kind of relax, I can sort of lean into the fat mate. You can even lock it a bit tighter. So, pretty cool stuff, I'd say. So, let's just go for a little walk here. As you can see, most of the weight is residing on the back tire. So, there's about 60% of the weight on the tire, and then 40% of the weight on my hips. Now, going uphill, I'm pretty sure that advantage decreases. And this is a pretty easy trail, so there's not a whole lot of obstacles. I kind of want to just get accustomed to the motor process before I really put it to the test at high altitudes over sharp rock and scree. I'm definitely going to be bringing a higher patch kit. So the monowalker is one of those things that definitely takes a bit of getting used to, but once you adapt to it, you'll wonder how you ever carried a lot of gear without it. And it's incredibly convenient once you get the hang of it. As you can see here, I'm using it with no hands, I'm carrying 90 pounds of gear and I'm doing the camera work all by myself. Mind you, I was on a decline there. Nonetheless, that is something you could not do carrying that gear on your back. Definitely not for a long period of time. I mean, there's points on this trail where I'm like running, no hands. You get in this rhythm where it's it's almost like uh, riding a unicycle or something where you, uh, it looks impossible, you know, to be able to run with it and steer it. But the way that the harness connects to the handles it has a bit of swing to it, so you get used to it, and you just master the motor skill to it, and it's something I'm still mastering, but, you know, it's one of those things, it's like a smartphone, you know, until you have one, you, you don't need it, but once you have one, you pretty much absolutely need it in order to function in life, it's sad to say. Uh, so here I am just walking on some open terrain, you know, no obstacles. Uh, I mean, obviously I had to hike a couple thousand meters to get up here, but it's incredible on ground like this where you really, you know, you, you may need one hand to kind of stabilize it once in a while, but you can just walk freely, even on trails like this along the creek here. The monowalker just totally outperforms any large hiking pack and a lot of cocky people will say oh you know you're just reinventing the wheelbarrow and if that was the case then you know why aren't more people doing it you know why why hasn't it been uh, mass produced you know where are all the modern hand carts i mean the fact is is that sometimes people are just oblivious to an idea uh, sometimes federal laws get in the way of that there are some limitations with where you can use these personal hiking trailers due to you know environmental concerns about uh, trails being ruined by them which for the most part is just you know nonsense 
but they are incredibly efficient once you get the hang of them. Now going uphill, yeah, carrying 90 pounds of gear. As you can see, uh, I'm just going to quickly interject here over the shoulder shot with the, uh, the wheelbarrow mode. Now in wheelbarrow mode, you actually have a lot more control over it. It wasn't till the end of a long trip that I did here on the Skyline Trail. It was 50, actually I think it was 70 kilometers or something like that. Actually, I think it was 50, yeah, 50 to 55 kilometers, something to that effect. And you can see here I'm running with the thing. It's just, uh, it's just an incredible machine. Like when you, when you get on the right form of terrain, it's totally worth every penny. It, if you're planning on carrying a large amount of gear, and I had some serious gear here. I mean, I had camera equipment, food, and uh, all sorts of stuff for a five-day trip. You know, sleeping. You know, all my toys. So it looks like the mono walker has found its first challenge. All right, so using my Leatherman saw, I was able to clear myself a path so that I can hopefully squeeze the mono walker through. It's gonna take some flexibility. Certainly not a limbo expert. This one I'm probably gonna have to get right down for. Looks like we did it. Took a little bit of work, but we got her done. This guy needs to work on his survival instincts. Right on here, I have strapped on my power film solar panel. That thing's been really helping out, uh, powering all the camera gear and stuff like that throughout this trip. I wouldn't have been able to do it without that. And the great thing about this concept is because it lies flat, I'm able to get more direct sunlight uh, using the mono walker. So the mono walker could use some improvements. It's not perfect yet. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done with this concept. As you can see here, uh, Pipsqueak Prepper is just showing uh, how strong the device actually is. It can stand up to a lot of abuse due to that aluminum frame you know that thing ain't breaking uh, I pretty much uh, it's pretty lightweight I think it's about 20 pounds or something like that as seen here the wheel is a couple pounds it'd be nice at some point if we could get that down in weight there is a mono walker trail mate which has a smaller wheel and the fat mate of course is the fatter wheel here I'm running on the mountaintop try to do that with a 90 pound backpack I dare you I mean, I'm sure you could for a short period of time, but the thing is, when I stop there, I'm not tired. There really is no better way to move large amounts of cargo in the backcountry. And of course, you can stop and rest. And that's the beauty of the braking system, is it really does make for uh, great uphill and, and uh, downhill descents. Now in winter, it's, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, a sled or a polk is superior. And in some ways it is, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, to have all the weight on the ground and none of it on your body, like you would with a polk, is beneficial. But what I found going through brush like this, and I actually went through some harsher backcountry uh, bushwhacking type brush that I don't show on camera here with it stuff that had I went over it with a pulk it would have been I don't want to say a disaster but it, it certainly would have been a lot harder and I probably would have had you know some tip overs and stuff like that the great thing of having it centered around your waist is that it can't tip over it's just gonna you know it's gonna go over whatever you can go over and you got about 
I don't know, like half a foot of clearance there on the bottom. Maybe a little bit more than that actually uh, from the axle to the bottom of the tire. So, Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. I'm at what they call the Notch of the Skyline Trail. Everybody came across, said that it was impossible to bring the auto walker down this slope. I've already brought it halfway. can't really see it here yet but there was one guy I encountered who said that you know it probably would be possible to do it and of the hundred naysayers I decided to listen to that one guy and it just goes to show that anything is possible if you put your mind to it if you have the will there's a way I say the it'll be a quick slide down into that uh, swimming pool down there So here I'm going downhill and it looks like I'm going very slow, which I am because you got to remember this is, uh, I don't know what kind of wicked incline this is. It's certainly on a 45. The fisheye lens doesn't do it justice. It is uh, very steep and there's a lot of rock. And the last thing I want to do is pop a tire on a trail like this and have to hump all that gear down. That lake down there, it looks close but it's very, very far away. If you've never climbed mountains before, then you, you don't have the understanding of scale when you're up that high. Like those, that looks like little patches of snow down there. Those are very large glaciers. Not very large, you know, in terms of relatively speaking, but they're larger than they look. There you can see the slope. camera doesn't really do it justice probably how steep it actually is but uh, hopefully I don't die when making this video that would be ironic but I think you know it's just a matter of being careful every step of the way this really isn't that bad if you're if you don't if you're not carrying a backpack There we go. Well, folks, I made it to the bottom of the notch. So here I'm attempting to do some bouldering with this thing, and I probably could have done it with the cart on the back, but I decided to do it in wheelbarrow mode. That wheelbarrow mode just allows you to get more precision with respect to where you're putting that tire and you can really minimize the amount of shock that is put on the chassis of the monowalker in doing it this way. And I found that if you're carrying it, the trailer behind you, you really don't know where that tire is bumping over. See, I'm cheering there because I made it through the hardest part of that bouldering uh, obstacle. But uh, if you have it face forward, it works amazingly well to, to navigate those those uh, sharp rocks and stuff that you don't want to get snagged up on. Here I'm just showing off the, the monowalker frame again, doing some, some cinematography, trying to get some good shots, some cutscenes. Here me and my buddy Sylvain Bushcraft, or Sylvain Boer, I should say, uh, who I'm going to be doing a video with in the near future, which documents some of his bushcraft gear. All of stuff that he's made by himself. I'm carrying uh, five or six of the bows that he made there and just testing it out in winter now. Of course, the one day I didn't bring my snowshoes is the day I needed them, and I could have used them on this day. Now, the, the Fat Mate wheel, it, it's okay in snow, but it's not, it's not nearly as good as a Pulk, obviously. Now there was a ski that was made for the Monowalker Fatmate tire that you could attach to the tire. I never used it. It didn't really look all that practical to me, 
but you could easily convert this into some sort of Polk system. And that's the great thing with the, the Monowalker platform is that it's totally open to your own customization. I mean, it's only limited by your, your skills and your tools. Crossing the creek here. There really wasn't a whole lot of obstacles I couldn't overcome with it in its uh, wheelbarrow or trailer configuration. I, I didn't have to use it once as a backpack. Even through bouldering. Now, obviously, if you're going over five foot boulders, you're going to have to convert it into some sort of pack. But that sort of ground is very rare. And it's very rare that you're going to have to bushwhack through uncut territory. Here I'm above the skyline, or sorry, above the tree line, I should say, and on the skyline trail. <laughs> That's why they call it the skyline, because it's it's the longest trail in Canada that has uh, you walking above the tree line, so they call it the skyline. But of course, to get there it takes a bit of work. Here I am with the GoPro on my head, trying to get some cool shots. It's a lot of work doing this photography thing. I had a lot more respect for guys like Les Stroud, Survivor Man, after doing things like this where I'm filming. So you gotta remember, you gotta put the camera in place, set up the shot, walk with the monowalker, you know, put it down, come back, get your cameras, pack it all up again. Go to the next scene. It takes a lot of work. But it's fun. It's, uh, it's a fun job. Not very financially lucrative, but it's a fun time. Just walking around some steep slopes, trying to get the hang of the monowalker. Canadian prepper, Signal Mountain, made it up with the monowalker. Excellent stuff. If you want, you can put a box on there. You know, you could do a lot with those aluminum poles that basically uh, make up the platform of the monowalker. You, see, you can see here I'm going pretty slow across these creeks. Now I could likely just barrel right over this, uh, especially if I had it in forward wheelbarrow mode. But this is, I think this was probably the first third of my trip and I didn't want to, you know, blow out a tire at this point. And that's one thing I would like to see, you know, there, there are uh, some tires that you can get for game carts, which are not uh, pneumatic in that they don't take air to use. So uh, they, there's no risk of them popping and that would be nice to incorporate into the monowalker. And I'm not sure if it's a weight issue because I know those weigh a little bit more, but uh, it would make going over some of those obstacles a bit more you know, fast. Uh, just. Uh, because I don't want to get a punctured tire and then have to hike either out or finish the trail when you got 30 kilometers to go with that much weight on your back. Not that it couldn't be done, it should be very inconvenient. Just doing some winter shots here. On flat ground, there, there's nothing that beats the monowalker, you know. In the winter time, the zipper on the bag, on the Ortley bag, which uh, the Fat Mate is actually going to have its own Monowalker branded bag, but it's going to be the exact same bag with the Monowalker logo on it. It's a very tough bag. The only problem with it in the in the winter time, of course, everything gets hard and uh, it gets very stiff and. Uh, when I did that minus 32 overnighter with the monowalker, it was, you know, it, it basically just, uh, the material froze up pretty good. It got very stiff. And so unless you have some WD-40 to lube it up in those conditions, because the zipper is so heavy duty and waterproof, 
as I've demonstrated in my second monitor, model walker video that I'll link to here. It's just a very high quality zipper. It's like uh, beyond YKK. It's uh, very waterproof and durable. But because of that, it's very hard to open in very cold conditions. So if your stuff's in there, it's in there. You know, getting it out can be a bit of a problem. It's very tall when it stands up. It's, it's bigger than you think. When you see a person walking with the monowalker, it, it doesn't look all that big. But it's not until you actually, you know, are standing beside it that you see how big it actually is. And it's amazing that it can even pack down into a backpack. And that's the great thing. Uh, it really is a transformer type machine because, you know, you can do it with a trailer. You can do it in the forward mode. You can put it in as a backpack. It's not the most comfortable backpack, mind you. And I've shown that in past videos. Uh, I don't think I have any footage of me putting it in the backpack configuration in this video. But uh, it's pretty easy to do. It's not the most comfortable. That's another part of the design <laughs> that could be tweaked a bit. Although the manufacturer isn't putting a lot of emphasis on that trying to more, more so focus on how it functions as a hiking trailer. Now there are other hiking trailers like the Dixon Roller Pack, which is far more light duty and probably only capable of carrying a, a fraction of the amount of weight that this thing can actually carry. I mean, this thing is meant for serious off-roading. There is the Monowalker Trailmate, which is still, you know, generally good for for probably most trails that you would take the Fat Mate on, although the Fat Mate is uh, just more geared towards carrying a lot more cargo over more treacherous terrain. That flat tire uh, gives you a bit more flotation. Uh, it's a bit easier to work with in the mud, the snow. I'm not too sure about over rocks because you would think with the wider surface area the tire there'd be more tire to pop now here I'm going up a very steep slope it doesn't really look that steep I'm, I'm on the left side there if you can't see me but uh, it's very steep and it takes a lot of work to get up a slope like that even without carrying any gear carrying a I think in this case here in this shot I must have been carrying about 70 pounds total gear with the monowalker it's a lot of work. downhill is easy if you have the disc brake and it's it's strange the uh, the disc brake has actually come in handy to slow my descent uh, you when you're going down a mountain especially if you're on loose scree uh, which is just uh, fine rock you'll tend to slide quite a bit and having that disc brake can almost help you put the brakes on things if you're sliding down the hill too fast it helps now you could always go into wheelbarrow mode if you wanted to either way works really going downhill I'd, I'd say probably on a really steep slope you'd want to go in wheelbarrow mode just to be safe and then go uh, do some cutbacks so don't go straight down you know go down like diagonally here I'm going up uh, up some uncut grasslands slash forest pretty steep speed it up there just so you don't fall asleep watching this it was very windy it's very windy in the mountains so I cut a lot of the sound out of this video uh, just because it was annoyingly wispy and I don't have the proper audio to really capture the natural sounds There's a lot of potential to put add-ons on the monowalker. So on the handles, 
I don't think I have it here in this shot, but uh, I did have some bike attachments that I put on the handlebars, which are just sort of bike uh, side packs, which uh, attach to the handles for quick access stuff. So you can kind of store stuff on the handles if you want to put a water bottle on there or something. Basically, a lot of the stuff that is going to be compatible with your bikes is going to be compatible with this. Now, I was recently talking to the manufacturer and uh, he's talking about putting some sort of fender fanny pack type thing over top of the tire too to carry even more gear kind of like uh, what cyclists use to carry gear on their long distance treks to put over the back tire so that adds even more potential for more cargo and of course because that's all resting on the back tire all of that weight you're not going to be bearing any of that load on your body and it's just incredible how long you can walk with this thing and not have to take it off. Like you absolutely cannot. It's impossible for you to walk with this amount of weight for as long as you can with a monowalker if it was on your back. It's just impossible. If I was carrying this on my back as in good of shape as I am, and I'm not bragging about that, I'm just saying I'm... I'm probably in, you know, the best shape I'm probably ever going to be. <laughs> uh, I would probably only be able to carry that backpack. I'd have to at least stop and rest up against a tree or something like that every five or ten minutes. Especially when you're going on the really, really, really steep slopes. You're probably going to be resting every 20 paces in some instances. Once you start uh, really reaching the the plus 2500 meter altitude mark when the air starts to get thinner but with the monowalker you put that disc brake on and you just stand for a few seconds you're recharged and ready to go just doing some root finding here don't want to get my feet wet if i don't have to just a fabulous tool in all dimensions Everybody's going to say, oh yeah, I could make that over the weekend in my basement. And I've seen somebody uh, say, oh yeah, I could make that. So I challenged them to make it on YouTube. I didn't even leave a comment on the video because uh, the guy made, he put like two 2x4s two together with a tire. And, you know, I mean, it doesn't even remotely compare to, to this. Would it work maybe for a small amount of gear? Uh, is it even worth it though? Because <laughs> it's gonna break down. Like this is made to last. Like to make to make a hiking trailer is one thing. To make a hiking trailer that can go over this kind of terrain is challenging, and that's why it's so expensive. Now I do think it's a bit overpriced still. Uh, I understand the pricing. I think it's. It's a small business. There's quality control because it's made in Germany. And the manufacturer is really passionate. Uh, Kai Fuchs of uh, Monowalker. There's a lot of integrity. He doesn't want to compromise on his product. He only wants to use the best materials. And of course, that comes at a cost, guys. And yeah, it's a $1,000 unit. I'm not going to lie. It's expensive. Just like... You know, $5,000 bikes are expensive, and $1,000 cameras are expensive. But for something, for the world of potential that this thing opens up, you can see it kind of slipped there. It's totally worth it in every way. Giving you some sneak peeks of the revised survival roll here, which I'm going to detail in an upcoming video. It's been in the works for a long time, actually. People have been asking about it. Some final shots. So if you have any questions about the Monowalker, we are doing another Kickstarter campaign right now. I am actually the representative for Monowalker in North America. So if you have any questions about the, the unit, feel free to send them my way. And also, if you have any suggestions, uh, send them my way or send them to Kai Fuchs of Monowalker. 
because uh, always looking for ways to enhance this unit. And the actual final monowalker is going to look a bit different than what you see here. So all of those details uh, will be explained on the Kickstarter campaign page. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers. How's it going? Canadian Prepper here. Would you like to subscribe to my YouTube channel? I'll take that as a no. I guess I'll have to eat you when the S hits the you know what. <laughs>